Hello, this is Truth Be Told Transformation, and I'm Bonnie Burkert, here to share tools for transformation to live your highest truth. I'm excited to announce that Truth Be Told will have its first ever event called the Parapod Festival, March 31st and April 1st in Santa Clarita, California. That's just a little bit north of where we are in Burbank. And it's going to be an amazing event. Go to parapodfest.com. Is it .com or .org, Tony Sweet? Dot com uh, for more information. And while we're talking about high vibe events, I'd like to bring you to our special speaker today. Shima Moore is the co-founder of one of the longest standing and most special brilliant events of its kind, the Conscious Life Expo. We'll be speaking about her history with that as well as her background as an astrologer and interdimensional guide. Welcome, Shima. Yay. Hi. Hi. Great to be here. If you happen to be watching on YouTube, um, you'll see that she's um, got Mount Shasta in the background, which is beautiful. But we are also appreciative of all of our listeners. Come on over to our YouTube channel if you just happen to be listening on the podcast. So, Shima, um, please tell me about your your inspiration for Conscious Life Expo, which will be happening, I should mention, uh, February 10th through 13th at the LAX Hilton. And this is 2023. That's right. It's a three-day event, but and then there's a post-conference. And we started the post-conference because when we first did the Conscious Life way back when, um, it was on a holiday weekend. And so Monday was the day off. And I was like, well, let's do a post-conference. So on Monday, we have just we have sort of like a more intimate, longer period of time with each of the speakers. And that'll be uh, a wonderful event as well. So it's four days of coming together with the tribe. And, you know, we were, um, I don't know, I, I know you've been to the expo. And in 2020, we were lucky to have kind of just gotten in there oh. uh, before everything shut down. Right. I'm trying and to think. About, I might have been at that one, as a matter of fact. Um, it's it's interesting to look back. I have definitely been many times, and I can't recommend it enough. And one of the things I love, Shima, is the variety of different speakers you have, as as well as the shopping opportunities. But anyway, <laughs> there's so I probably have so much crystal, mini crystals and much jewelry um, from that event. Um, and but I think it's just the, the uh, bringing the community together. Yes, that's what I'm. I'm so excited about it because the, the, in 2021 we weren't able to do that, but we still held it. We did an online event, and it was nice. You know, it was. We wanted to stay connected with with our people, um, and then in February, um, and then in September, we had uh, an event, and that was a smaller event, but it was live, and it was wonderful. And uh, then last February, again, we kind of resumed. And But this year, this is going to be our biggest event ever. It's three floors solid. Um, and what I love about it is it's really multi-generational. It's multi-dimensional. It's multimedia. It's going to be um, really stepping into the whole new world. And you know, the timing couldn't be more perfect. We have so many changes happening um, astrologically, um, some of the very um, uh, cultural changing planets that will be shifting signs, and we'll all start feeling that. So we're kind of like leading up into that point right now, and it's very, very exciting. I like the, you know, it's a, it's a beautiful time of year to be having this because we're, I think January starts a little bit slow. And if you look at the astrology of this particular January 2023, everything, you know, there was lots of retrograde happening. And, and at the time that we'll be gathering on uh, February uh, 10th, it, it, things are really going to be humming. Wouldn't you agree? I think it's going to be, I, it's going to be like the year is really going to be starting to flourish. Yes. Well, you know, we just shifted into a, a new Chinese year, the, the year of the yin rabbit. And, and we actually even have a, a, a feng shui Chinese astrology master from Singapore who will be coming and sharing about that. She'll be on our panel, on our astrology panel. So we'll have sort of like the east-west flavor of that. And um, uh, But also that weekend... 
coming up just in the next few days, Venus is going to go into Pisces. And that is the perfect place for Venus. It's love. It's just, it just couldn't, it's, it's a sweet, sweet place. And I'm so excited that we have that, that weekend and all the planets will be direct. So it's like full tilt bore. And um, I, it's just, I can't, I, I, I just know it's going to be so exciting and such a wonderful chance to connect with, with the tribe, to connect with people, um, uh, old friends, new friends, it's going to be wonderful. Exactly. Well, and the entire Truth Be Told team will be there, just so you know. Now, Good. one of the things I was looking at YouTube, so whenever I have a guest, I always you know, hunt around YouTube to see what's going on. And I saw your opening ceremony from 2017, and it was a little taste of the Stargate activation. So I'd love to speak with you. I'm not... You have to go to the event to get the full experience, of course. Exactly. But I would love to know. I, I only got to listen to the the little beginning of it, and it was interesting. I was kind of feeling. Do you ever get that that little ring in your ear when it's just the vibration starts to amp up? I mean, I was just getting that from watching your YouTube video of this meditation. So, Shima, what can we expect for um, what you have planned for us to to kick things off? Well, you know, that's I. One of the things I've discovered with the Stargate, I, I was introduced to the Stargate in 2012. Interesting timing there. And um, had my first experience of it in 2013, began bringing it to the San Francisco Bay Area, and then um, started coming up to Mount Shasta, where the Stargate started, uh, moved its its main, its main home. And... Um, Shortly after, I became a facilitator for the Stargate, and and I found I, I was doing an event in Marin at one point, bringing together, it was like the first event of its kind of bringing together a lot of fifth dimensional teachers and healers and things. And at the beginning of the event, I just did a brief little Stargate. I had a little Stargate on the stage, and, and you know, I was kind of running the event, and so it was like, shima, 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 it was, it was really kind of crazy. And I did the Stargate, and the, it was just a brief 10 minutes max. The energy in the whole place shifted. My energy shifted, and it was just an amazing, amazing experience. And it was the first time that I had that I did that, and that was, mm, gosh, probably 2015, 2016 maybe. And then I started at the expo, and I, um, and I would do um, uh, a, a a brief. Sometimes I did a brief uh, uh, Stargate meditation. Might have been, and I think it was twenty twenty. But prior to that, I would do like a, a forty five minute Stargate astrology mix, and. The energies, you know, we call in the angels and the archangels, um, the ascended masters, the uh, sometimes the energy of Mount Shasta and the, and the Lemurians and our star families. It's just, I, you know, I have been into meditation all of my adult life. And when I first experienced the Stargate, I couldn't believe how quick how quickly I could like tune into the energies and I just kept going back for more and more and it just it gets better and better. So I'm, I'm just delighted to share it with people, you know, no, it's, it's really going to feel really good bring people into that energy and start the whole event off like that. <laughs> well, right. No, it's, it's a, it's a blessing. It's a beautiful, it's a, it's a beautiful blessing for the event and all that attend in the space that it's attended. It's, it's a protection, it's protective light. It's bringing the light through. So I have a sense of the Stargate, but I thought for our listeners, maybe you'd like to explain just a little bit more about what it is, because you mentioned a specific structure. And I did have an experience myself in 2012 that I was seated in the pyramid structure, which I guess would have been a Stargate. I was down in Mexico. I was down in the Yucatan. Um, and so why don't you explain a little bit what's going on and what it is about that structure as well as the different uh, layers of dimension that we're accessing by 
calling it through. Well, the Stargate is um, the the Stargate experience. Uh, there is a structure. It's a, and I, I would have brought it here. I didn't realize that that we would be talking about it, but um, um, the Stargate is a three dimensional structure. It's a door. It's like a doorway. It it uh, accelerates the energy in the room. It brings up through the vibrations and it's quite a quite remarkable actually we go up to the 12th dimension if you can imagine mm. and um uh it's it happens instantly you know we're we're shifting into a quantum reality and so it thing we can just kind of actually some of the experiences in the stargate um we can experience it in this moment and we can experience it from a future moment coming into this moment. It's like, it's beyond the rational, our rational capacity sometimes, I think, to uh, really tune into what it is. But, um, and so once we are in that higher state, once we're into the 12th, 12th dimension, um, we're more receptive to the higher dimensional benefit beings that want to, want to, want to help humanity shift and we are in that state and we're coming to a we are coming to a 26 end of a 26,000 year cycle and so many other cycles they're all merging at this point and so we have uh there are many dimensions we have this dimension that we can see uh science has shown that uh what we think of as solid actually is mostly space and so imagine being able to shift into that consciousness um, and just perhaps, you know, allowing yourself to be in that space, to be guided in that space. So that's kind of, you know, I, I wanted people to be able to just kind of really step through into that whole other possibility imagine the possibility it is really like that yeah that's powerful no i love that and i think it's um a great way to again start the event on a lot of different levels so you said you've been meditating for a long time and you mentioned that you started to get into this type of meditation more so in 2012 is that correct this particular meditation yes right. i have been into um have a had had a teacher a guru for 50 years i mean all my adult life oh, so wow. it's been quite remarkable and really there was there were times um where i just couldn't really imagine how people uh life just seemed so chaotic at times and so um intense i couldn't really imagine living in, in this world without having a experience of a higher reality. I remember going, I was brought up Catholic, I went to Catholic school, the whole thing. And I remember going back east I, from the East Coast. And uh, I remember going back east and going to midnight mass for, for Christmas. And, 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 Looking at you know, I, I like the I like the energy of it. I always liked the energy of it. I would always, I I would sit in front of um, statue of of the Blessed Mother, and want her so much to come and speak to me, just to feel that energy. I feel that in the Stargate. It's like, oh my God, mm -hmm. I've wanted this all my life. But I remember asking my sister in law, why do you come? Do you what what do you get from this? Because I always felt like I had the experience of being able to experience that energy that some people call God, spirit, source, um, that type of thing. So it's, it's just remarkable through the years. You know, what you focus on is what your life becomes. And so I feel like I, I very blessed, very blessed indeed. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, you are Shima, and I, I'd like to comment for a woman who is about to launch an event in two weeks. You are so calm. It's really wonderful <laughs> to see. You are exemplary of a living a conscious life, if you will. So, um, so listen. Yeah, you know, I mentioned Sh Mount Shasta. You know, seeing the image in 
in your background for those who happen to be watching. And um, I'd like to ask, how do you feel location factors in to meditation? Can it enhance it? Or is it just wherever you are, you know, wherever, wherever you go, there you are? Exactly, exactly. And you know, yes, it's just, it's a gift to be here for me. You know, this is not for everyone. I had a friend one time say to me, Chima, I know how much you love Mount Shasta, but I like it. I said, well, it really depends. What do you like to do? Oh, I like to go out to dinner. Don't come here. It's not the place for the big social life. I like the quiet. I like having the mount. I just, I just really love the energy here, but it is not for everyone. It's too quiet for some people, you know. For me, I like the small town. I guess I was brought up in a small town back east many years ago. But this is really country. And it's really what I love. But in terms of meditation, the beauty of meditation is that, as you said, wherever you go, there you are. And so you could be in the middle of chaos. And if you know how to go inside and experience that quiet inside, then you know it that you can and, and more and more now people are discovering this this is really the wonderful thing i mean it used to be like oh well woo woo or mm, so alternative it was like out there and people didn't really understand it and unfortunately now people get it and uh meditation or guided imagery or learning how to follow our breath Whatever the road is for you, whatever it is that works for you, and even in terms of the Stargate, it's not the only, it's certainly not the only way to connect with that energy and more and more. And this is the thing at the, at this, at the, um, at the conscious life, there are many, many experiential, um, experiences there. There are many, many experiential workshops and, uh, special events and, amazing amazing presenters some of the, most of the, many of them i know i don't know them all and um, i always look forward to connecting with those people that i haven't met yet because it's gotten so big through the years you know in the early days three of us started it back in the day and I brought in all the speakers and, you know, people with the three of us and M Mary did her. She brought in the exhibitors and it has just grown and grown and grown. So I go to the expo and it's an experience for me as well. You know, it's not like I, I I'm open to the experience of it. And it's such a marvelous experience. All levels. Yeah. Well, that was one of the things I thought would be interesting to talk about. So well, when was the first expo, Conscious Life Expo? What year you was it? You know, it was the early, it was the early 2000s. Okay. All right. And um, 2002. And it was, you know, I remember people like Daniel Brinkley. Daniel was with us at the very first expo. Incredible. And he's going to be there this this one, you know, so certain people have been there every single, every single expo, but it just keeps morphing into a new thing and into a new thing. And, and these days now there's a whole new generation of conscious, open, aware people. And I love that. It's kind of, I just, you know, my experience is doesn't matter how old somebody is. It's your it's that connection. It's that kindred spirit type of thing. You know, I'm into music. And so when I look in a crowd and I see, and I see someone else whose head is moving to the same music or their body is moving to the same music, it's like they could be sometimes, you know, they could be my child, they could be my grandchild, but it doesn't matter because we are, we're just connected. And that's really what it's all about. It's conscious. It is the conscious life. It's about, it's about, and we don't, you know, all of us, this life is about evolving. So we all have our moments. We're not, I mean, I couldn't say, oh, I'm, I'm conscious every moment of the day. No, I have my moments where I'll be kind of uh, frenetic or freaked out in some capacity. That's what life is about. It is a learning experience. We're all getting better, hopefully. And um, for me, the whole thing is uh, experiencing each other in such a way that we're kind to one another, that we love one another, ourselves as well in that. 
forgiving each other, you know, and I think, and I think, um, generally at conscious life, people find that, you know, you find that energy. If you've never been there, I mean, I have people come back. There have been people who have come back like the next year and, and they'll, they'll be filming and they're just like, wow, this changed my life. Oh, that's... And they just started traveling around the world and, and suddenly a whole other reality opened up to them. And that's so important, you know, in these day, in this day and age, you know, most media just focuses on just all the intensity of the world. I mean, that's, that's what a lot of, you know, that's what sells. But we want, we want the, the information that you're sharing. You know, we want the information at Conscious Life. Uh, it's like, it's important. It's important to share with one another and it, on, on stage and off. Exactly. Right. And, and um, so I think you'll find that there. And this year we have like late night events. This year we have, we'll have music in the, on the plaza level, like to, I don't know, it'll go till whenever it goes, I guess, <laughs> but it'll be, it will be quite wonderful. So we have, we have uh, awards, uh, book awards, we have Expos Got Talent, and that'll be fun with a few surprises. Um, uh, special uh, uh, opportunities to have lunch with people like George Nori and some of the, and some of uh, Jimmy Church and and some of the uh, UFO folks. And it's it's just it's going to be quite it quite the quite the event for sure. So besides the Stargate, um, the opening ceremony, which would be a Stargate app activation, is that act? Is that there'll be a Stargate act? There'll be some. There'll be a Stargate activation. There'll be a um, uh, authentic, uh, traditional, uh, feng shui Chinese blessing. So oh. we'll have the East West. We'll have um, uh, a beautiful couple, Twin Ray doing a ceremony at the end of it. We'll have astrologer uh, Rick Levine uh, starting us off with some flute at the very beginning and uh, some Native American flute. And so it, it will be it will be really a nice way to kick off the event. So um, Friday this year, Friday is really a great day to start. Sometimes people don't come till Saturday, but this year I definitely recommend people make an effort to get there early. We start at one o'clock on Friday. So and it will go till one in the morning. If you're, you know, not all of us will be up at one to close it out exactly. No, it's great. Hey, listen, you got to do something with the energy that you've created. So I think right. dance is beautiful. And also it's a, a chance to, um, to meet each other is what I really like yes. about that. Yes. So yes, yes. Um, Shima, are you also doing another workshop? You're doing an astrology workshop, correct? Yes, I'm doing it. I'm doing a workshop on Friday afternoon at four. And I always like to do the basics, you know, it's interesting. It just kind of like worked like this. Mount Shasta is about bringing heaven down to earth. And I like to do that with astrology, bringing the cosmos down to earth, making it understandable for people. Because um, I know we, we've had so many years of um, uh, d demon, you know, between the church and people don't want, you know, astrology is empowering. It's a, it allows us to see what's what's happening, what happened before when when these particular planets came together. So what I like to do, I'll I'll leave that again with a little brief Stargate meditation just to set the energy, and um, and then talk about some of the basics so that people can because there's going to be there's all astrologers that I've brought, um, um. I really, you know, there's a lot of different kinds of astrology. And I like to call uh, what I do real astrology because um, it's not just kind of like, oh, what sign am I and who am I going to marry? You know, I mean, that's that's a lot of, you know, love and 
and uh, work and all of that success. A lot of people, that's what they're into. And yes, you can, you can explore that with astrology. But I've always been, ever since, you know, I started studying astrology, I, I can't tell you. I mean, it's been many years. It's been over 40 years that I've been into astrology and I just, and it never gets boring. It just gets, goes deeper and deeper and deeper. And I can see by your acknowledgement of it that you are definitely in tune with that. And um, so I like, I, I want to give people sort of a, a way to approach the whole weekend because there's going to be a lot of a lot of really good astrologers there some i don't i haven't even met yet but i'm looking forward to meeting them um but i have an astrology panel on sunday i have david uh palmer the 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 leo king who is going to be doing the djing late night djing which is what he does on his high vibe tv and uh on friday night and then on saturday rick levine who is world renowned and has gotten awards even from in India uh, as as an astrologer? Um, he'll be doing a workshop on Saturday. Uh, Clarice Chan will be doing a Chinese astrology and feng shui workshop um, lecture on Saturday. Uh, I have a. Uh, 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 Cameron Allen, who's an astrologer and an herbalist. Astrology really can be used in a way that we can, he you know, to heal ourselves, to be aware of what our body needs. And then also, uh, Kaylin Castell and Rick Levine will both be doing post conferences on Monday. And then there's astrologers, as I said, that I haven't even met yet. Matt Gleason, um, Star Girl, um, Ocean Sky, and probably a few others. That so I'm looking forward to seeing what people have to say. I call myself an astrological curator. Your astrological curator, actually, on Facebook, and I I sometimes will put. Um, I like when I listen to a webinar. I often transcribe it. Gemini North Node. I just like to communicate. I like to read it. So I transcribe it when I'm, if I listen to something, I happen to be able to type really fast. And, uh, <clears throat> and I post, I like to share it with people. I'm, I'm an educator from the old school of Edukar to lead out. How can I help bring out of you that which who we really are? You know, we have, we've been enculturated from the moment we took our first breath on how we're supposed to be but really who are we and that's always been my that's like what i'm about it's like all the things that i do are about bringing heaven down to earth and discovering who we are and to being the best that we can be so Excellent. i think conscious life expo is a wonderful way to do that and i'm so delighted to be able to have all these offerings to integrate astrology and stargate and i also teach a um a, a panurhythmy a, a, a movement from bulgaria of all places that was sort of came to me and then i was asked to lead it eventually and again it's about bringing heaven down to earth it's all circular mm -hmm. it's all about the cosmos and having that experience so it's my it's my joy to do that and, and Robert Quicksilver, um, I actually brought him into the expo world back in the day. He and I knew each other um, prior to that. Um, I met him actually in hmm, two thousand, and I had heard of him ten years earlier than that from uh, from friends from a whole other circle so you know it's interesting when you look at life and one of the things I love about about life looking back is that we the cycles right if you look back and I always recommend to people journal because yeah. there's nothing like going back and do you journal I'm I do yes. yeah no it's great and I'll just I'll, I'll mention really quickly how I remember writing in a journal doing some writing and then for some reason stopping looking back at an old journal at that moment and realizing i had written the same thing and it was time to break that pattern so it was yes. some woe is me journaling right 
that I had done 10 years prior or some uh, some very you know, distant time. So I agree that journaling can be very revealing. Yes. And, you know, I, I experienced because as an astrologer, I'll look back. Oh, what was I doing it last time this happened? OK. 30 years ago. Mm hmm. Yeah. And it is such a back to the future experience. <laughs> and I can so remember being in that space doing that. And it's like, wow. Yeah. Just amazing. Such aha, aha, aha experience. I love hearing about you as a teacher. So we've been talking a lot about the expo, but you work with people all year long, right? It's not just about this one weekend in February, right, Shima? So you've got yes. you, you uh, lead workshops up in Shasta. Tell us a little bit about your work and how people can find you. Well, um, my I, I do have a website, although I it definitely needs to be up dated, but it is at least a way for people to connect with me. As I said, you know, I like to teach what I learn. And I've done that ever since the days that I used to teach tap dance. And I'd be learning the the uh, triple time step and teaching the, the single time step. So I, I, I'm, um, I'm a communicator, and I am a teacher. So whether it's astrology, which uh, uh, I began recently a group called um, M Star Mount Shasta Tropical Astrology Reflections. Okay, and I wanted to bring together um, people who can speak the language of astrology. I also do things moon manifestation and how to use the cycles of the moon. Um, I do Stargate meditation from time to time, and I lead Panyarhythmy during the. Uh, spring once once we hit warmer weather here because we do that outside and it's just re it's just a wonderful experience generally on Sundays um, it's free I like to do things for free donation and I I'm happy to share I just like to so like step off the wheel of of the you know that that whole the whole reality of um, commerce and financial yeah. struggle of life that so many of us have experienced for so long. So I'm happy to be in a place where I can just kind of like freely offer things. I appreciate hearing I, that. Yeah, I think that's that great. Feels good to me. Can we talk a little yeah. bit more about the moon manifestation? I think that sounds um, really well, you know, I did, I did a uh, opening ceremony at an expo years back and right before I moved to Mount Shasta in 2018. And this woman tracked me down. I had already, I left the Bay Area. I moved to Mount Shasta and she wanted to bring me to um, this, uh, like Los Gatos area. It wasn't exactly Los Gatos, but down now, down around where Apple is, it turned out she had come to one of my workshops and just loved it and, and set up a whole day of stargate and astrology and I, and moon manifestation and so i taught people about the you know there if you look at any calendar you'll see that there are four cycles right there's the new moon there's the quarter first quarter the full moon the third quarter and then the new moon again so four mm -hmm. cycles but if you go a little deeper you'll find that in between those are other Points. So you've got like the crescent moon, the when the moon is waxing or growing yeah. to fruition. And then you have when it's when it's waning or disseminating. And each and the moon really shows and what I love about them, and I had a radio show years ago, and um I just it I didn't plan it, but I've done new moon wishes for years. I get a journal. Write down at the new moon, not before, once the new moon has actually crossed, the, the timing is important. Good advice. You start writing down at least one, but up to 10 new moon wishes. Okay. And you always create, you know, in what you like are in that space. I am enjoying such and such, right? And uh, so I started this, ra I was invited to start this radio show and um I began it on the vernal equinox, you know, the it's it's the only point of the year where astrologers and astronomers agree. It's the zero point of Aries in the sky. That's great. So I started, of course, Monday. It was Metaphysical Monday. And I was uh, Shima, Metaphysics and more. 
M-O-O-R-E. Got it. So that was fun. I actually did it for, I did 56 shows, two-hour shows. It was really quite amazing. Anyway, the second week happened to be the new moon. And so I started, well, I'm going to share the new moon with people. So I started, and I, I didn't even realize at the point, but every Monday was pretty much, it was a seven-day cycle. The moon cycle is 28, 29 days. And so it was the quarter moon. And I started, I, as I say, I share what I learn. And so I began every, every Monday I began talking about the moon, what phase the moon was in. I liked it because people could go outside, wherever you were in the world, you could go outside and you could see the moon. It wasn't like, I believe in the moon. Here's the moon. What does it look like? What does that mean? How does that affect our lives? How does it affect us when we're born? What phase of the moon were you born in? How does that, how does that, relate to your personality. So it just it's just really amazing. And then I discovered that every one of the planets has that same cycle. It's like the moon cycle. Mm-hmm. The moon comes together, the new moon, the beginning of things, that conjunction. Every planet has that conjunction. You know, I have, probably most people remember in 2020 in December around Christmas, the it was actually the winter solstice. And Jupiter and Saturn came together, and that's a 20-year cycle. It really sets the tone. It was beautiful. I remember that clearly. My neighbor was like, we were out on my porch, and it was was beautiful. I mean, it almost felt like you were having a little Star of Bethlehem moment um, in a way, right? But there's something, but there's always something absolutely magical to to see in the sky. Yes, and if lately Mars has been out there. Mars is if you look up at the sky, um, I was I happened to, to be at an event one night. I looked up and and well, first of all, there was Jupiter, and Jupiter was like so bright. And then there was Mars, red, yeah. so red. And if you look up at Orion, most people can find Orion, those three stars of his belt in the sky. And if you look up at Orion to the right. And that's where the Pleiades is and Taurus is. There is Mars. And once you start to like recognize some of the stars, we can't see all of them. Some of them, the outer planets, we definitely, um, sometimes you can see them. But if you ever have a chance to look in a telescope and, and if Saturn is in the sky, I was blown away when I first saw Saturn in the sky. And it's like, I looked up and it was like, there were the rings around Saturn. It was just like, it was like a little icon a dream. of Saturn. Yeah. But there it was. And so it's really amazing. And, and you want to be out in the stars with the moon as well. And just feel their energy. Feel the messages that they have for us. Because, you know, more and more astrologers are starting to look up from the paper up to the sky Mm, and to connect because let's face it there was a time when that's all there was right there was the sun and the day and the stars at night and what a show that must have been the night sky once upon a time i can only dream of knowing that truly wow so and that's maybe why you're up in shasta is because you've got you know brilliant night skies and really just the most effervescent energy and i and i feel it just talking to you and i know that anybody that makes it to the event at the lax hilton again february 10th through 13th will also experience it too shima let's take a deep breath and just like any last parting words that you want to share with us what what's coming through for from you right now Well, definitely, if you can be there, do come to the expo. Uh, We're we're so looking forward to connecting with you. You know, I always tell my audiences that you're the reason why we're there. Without you, we wouldn't be there. And so we are we we are making it as comfortable and easy to come together to learn what and and if it's your first time welcome if you've been there before welcome back 
but it's kind of like that feeling when you're coming in and I'm sure there'll be a lot of people. So just take a breath when you get there. Okay. And just get yourself into a, a place because there's a lot happening and it can really feel overwhelming. So when you find, get yourself the catalog when you get there, the program guide, which when I got it in the mail, I was like, oh my gosh, this is huge. So there's a lot happening. If you can get a copy before, you can call, oh, actually there's an 800 number for the expo. And I'm going to recommend that you give a call. And the number is 800 367 Five seven seven seven, and don't wait till the weekend of the expo because probably there won't be a live person there to answer. Be a little we'll be busy, the expo. but call before and and wonderful people there to answer your questions. And if you're not um, an online, we're online also consciouslifeexpo.com. And if you're not a uh, digital oriented online person, um, well, just call us. And we'll we'll guide you through it the best we can. That way, we realize not everybody has is into um, digital, so we try to accommodate everyone. There will be uh, there will be on site filming there. So if you go there, you can only get copies of things at the expo. So right. um, uh, we look forward to welcoming you, Bonnie. I look forward to seeing you and your your. Your, everybody there. We're going to have a booth there. I, We're going to be interviewing. So um, I, we are very, very happy to be partners with you. I mean, truth be told and Conscious Life and um, you're helping us again sort of usher in our own event, which is distinctive in that we're going for the paranormal. We've got a, a seance um, that we'll be doing, for example, in an old ghost town and so and a film festival as well for the paranormal. So that's kind of our distinct distinction for the parapod. Podfest in April, and we're bringing in that spring energy. You all are are here in the winter, the burgeoning right of this kind of yes, new I, life. I, well, remember, it's Aquarius energy. Yeah, right. So we are, you know, the whole age of Aquarius mm. thing, which is representing, like, there's a lot of con con representing conversation about that. But we are the so we are entering the time of we the people, and this is a time of you know Aquarius being like beyond the the norm, actually. Uh, of things, you know, anything's possible with Aquarian technology and, and so much more, but, um, really coming together. We will have, we are going to have a seance as well. We're having three days of seances with Susan Slaughter up in the, um, a special a special private event for that. So you'll have to check that out as well. So much to know and so much interest in it. Thank you so much, Shima. This is fantastic. And we will see you there and um, also on the mountain at some point as well. We appreciate I look it. To it. All right. Yes. Thank you kindly. Thank Everyone, you we're so much, it's really excited. This is the con you know, we're talking conscious community here. We're so happy that we're able to gather in person again. Um, but in the meantime, we appreciate you watching and listening. So please know that we have a new episode of Truth Be Told a Transformation on Wednesdays and every Friday, Tony Sweet. Truth Be Told live, um, that would be 3 p.m. Pacific. And Robert Hensley on Mondays, also live at 3 p.m. Pacific with the Minuteman Report. Once again, we are parapodfest.com, March 31st and April 1st. But before that, we will see you at Conscious Life Expo. We will be there <laughs> with bells on February 10th through 13th. We appreciate you. Thanks for the follows and the shares. Until the next time, stay well. Stay shiny. Peace, love.